PJ Moore, and I know that it's a movie appreciation and history and soundtrack podcast, uh, but these mini episodes are going to be a little shorter, and I'm going to talk about basically anything that has music in it, including video games. And today we're covering one of my favorite video games, uh, especially when it comes to just like weird, weirdness, uh, and like the, the soundtrack is super jazzy. It's a great game to just play when you don't know what to play or you just want to relax. And that is Katamari Damacy or Damacy. However you want to put Whatever tickles you, however to pronounce it. But this game is fantastic. Let's put, let's put it up there. Yeah, you can get it. It's like 20 bucks around at GameStop. It's totally worth it if you've never tried it. Maybe you've never heard of it. Uh, basically, you play tiny little guy uh, and he is the prince of the cosmos and he has to get a bunch of garbage that is on earth he's got to roll it up into a ball he's got to put it put it up into the sky and uh, the reason he has to do this is because the king of the cosmos got drunk and got rid of all the stars so now there's no more stars so we gotta put something in the sky and that's where the prince of the cosmos comes in now uh, Basically, you just go around, rolling stuff up, picking it up, and then uh, your Katamari gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, once you finally get to, to like the size that you want to, or that you have to get it to within the time limit, then you like beat that level and so on and so forth. And there's a bunch of different game modes and challenges. Uh, but yeah, definitely give it a try. It's really fun. Uh, just to go into some facts, I've got some notes here. Lucky you. Uh, let's, uh, let's just dive right into it. So, uh, the word Katamari uh, comes, uh, is like, it means clump soul, basically, loosely translated. Uh, so, you're ba it's, yeah, it's like a clump spirit. You just you clump a bunch of shit together, basically. And that's kind of where the name comes from. Um, it came out in 2004 on PS2, um, and like a lot of sequels came out, there were, uh, like, We Love Katamari, which was the sequel to it, and then Beautiful Katamari, and Katamari Forever, uh, and the art tour of the game, uh, I believe his name was Keita Tak uh, Takahashi, but he was pretty opposed to, like, the sequels, and we'll get into that more later. Uh, but, so pretty much uh, after that... Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so uh, all the other games were kind of, like, not super great. I, did, I actually didn't play Katamari until I got to... I don't know. I want to say it was Katamari Forever on the PS3, and I didn't have a PS3, but I went to Walmart when you could, back in the day, when you could, like, play video games while your mom shops for oranges or whatever, and, uh, yeah, that was the first time I played Katamari, and it, immediately I thought it was the funnest game that I had ever played, uh, and I didn't really pick it up until I saw it, like, at, at a video game store, and I saw that they remade Katamari Damacy, and I was like, ah, oh, it's that game from, from the Wally world that I wanted to play so much, but didn't have money. And now I do, so I got, ha, I got it. It's very fun. I don't, I don't really have money, but I had 17 bucks, so that was nice. I got it. <laughs> if you have 17 bucks, you should get it. It's, it's tons of fun. Uh... And so, uh, Reroll, the game I was just talking about, came out for, uh, the Switch and the BC on, uh, December in 2018. That's uh, a very silly game, like I said before. It kind of reminds me of, like, uh, 
untitled goose game kind of thing. Uh, other games have tried to imitate it since, like uh, Donut Hole, I think it's called. It's Donut Hole is basically Katamari, but instead of a ball, it's a hole, and you just go around picking up everything or destroying it uh, into a, a vast hole, basically. But it's not, it's not an episode of Donut Hole, it's an episode of Katamari. Uh, the game is very comedic, but it feels uh, challenging because you have, like, the time limit before you're, like, because you got to roll it up within the time limit. And I should also say, you it's not just, like, random. Well, I mean, very much so is random stuff that you pick up, but it's, like, you can only pick up things that are smaller than you, and then once you get bigger and bigger, you can eventually pick up, I don't know, cops who are shooting you, and uh, sumo wrestlers, and giant squids and buildings, the universe at, at some point. It's very, very silly and super fun, and it it will put a smile on your face. Um, oh, the side stories with the cutscenes are so good, too. They're very odd. Uh, and they were, like, the characters in, like, the children, if you've played the game, you know, the, but there's, like, these children and the mom, and they're all very, like, square-looking, but apparently that was made after uh, some of the sculptures that, <coughs> excuse me, that Takahashi had uh, made. And, oh, hey! <coughs> Randy, everybody. Come here, bud! Hi! I'm doing a, I'm doing a show. You want to say hi? Oh, come here. You want to say hi. You're a logical boy. This is Randy. How about that? He's my little guy. You want to talk about Katamari with me? Okay. So, um, uh, where'd I leave off? Oh yeah, those cutscenes, uh, they're, they're very cool. Uh, they were made after, uh, some sculptures that Takahashi had made. Uh, when he was pursuing art, uh, and he didn't always want to pursue art. He originally uh, wanted to be an architect because that was a steadier job, he felt. Uh, and then... Uh, okay, I can't do this with you here, buddy. You're too distracting. You're so cute. He's so cute. Isn't he, folks? Isn't he? He's so cute. Um... And so, uh, yeah, the side story cutscenes, uh, they can be real odd, but they do really, like, put more of a story perspective in the game, which is super cool and really fun to follow with it. Uh, it gives it a little bit more depth in the game. Um, uh, Takahashi had, uh, gotten the idea from a, uh, game, I can't remember... Oh, man, I'm trying to remember how to pronounce the name of that game. Uh, but basically, it was, like, a game that people would play, uh, like, field day, and it's just, like, pushing a giant ball in between goals. Kind of like a, uh, like a soccer with your hands. Look at that kitty tail. He's still in here. <laughs> um, uh, the game got a $700,000 budget, uh, which was basically the, like, one-tenth of other Namco projects. Uh, the only controllers are the analog sticks. Um, it had, and this is where we'll start getting into, uh, the soundtrack, which is the reason for the season on this show, uh, which is gonna be, uh, it was made by, where, where did I put his name? Where did I put his name? Oh, I can't remember his name. I want to say it's like... Uh, the last name is like Make You or something? I'm going to look it up. I'm sorry. Very unprofessional of me. Talk amongst yourselves. Unless you're watching this alone. Which, you know, that's cool. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh... Get a cat. They're nice. He he's still here. He'll follow me anywhere I go. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. composer of K 
Katamari, Domasi. Yumiake, okay. I was close, kind of. Uh, so Yumiake, uh, he actually did a lot of the songs just by like humming. Like, a, mm, like in the beginning of this episode, the boom, ba da 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 da, boom, boom, get the money to my Like that. He would just like kind of hum these tunes into his like recorder or cell phone. And his friends would actually like make fun of him for doing this. So he like kind of just uh, hid off to the side whenever he would like do these like in a, like in an office or something. But I thought that was so funny because, like, back when I was in bands, that is definitely how I wrote riffs. I was like, oh, what if it was like, 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 it's kind of like that scene from Metalocalypse, just, oh, is it the one that's like, no, it's the one that's more like, metal bands are fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, a lot of it was also inspired by like J-pop and disco from the time, which you could definitely hear in it, like uh, like the uh, oh shit, what is it? I'm trying to remember the name of the song. I can't remember, but it's like oh, booty, bump, down, burn, down, burn, down, baby. Like, it's been a while since I played this game, and I still remember all these songs so vividly. Like, they're all just such infectious songs. Especially, like, the, the lounge act kind of swing. I want to roll you up into my life. Like, it's very, like, kind of, like, Sinatra-y, kind of croonery kind of song. Uh... And then, uh, there's also a bunch of weird sounds that are just like in it like uh you can if you listen closely you can hear like quiet sobbing or uh uh children outside and he got these from like field recordings just from being out and about in the world uh -huh. and i thought i had more notes somewhere around here Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, the guy who uh, sang that song, I think it's the, I think his name is Charlie Kusai, I want to say. Uh, but yeah, that song is great. Uh, I'll also be posting, uh, like, a Katamari, a link to, like, a Katamari Damacy uh, playlist so you guys can hear the that it's great, like, if you want to listen to it in, like, a shower or, like, at the grocery store. Pretty much any time of day is a good time to listen to the soundtrack. Pause this. Go listen to it. It's great. Don't listen to me. Go listen to that. It's so good. Uh, that being said, thank you for watching. I do appreciate that. It's, uh, it's very nice. It tickles me pink. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, uh, like familiarity and nostalgia in the game uh like it, it's all very like kind of chibi and cute and just all around at the same time like very silly but at the same time there's also uh many like kind of references going on in it uh if you pay close attention uh like there's like, all kinds of, like, monsters that you can find. There's, like, giant robots and stuff. So there are, like, pop culture references in it. You just kind of have to, like, keep your eye out, which is always really cool, and I appreciate, uh, well, uh, playing a game. And then, uh, the original commercial for <laughs> uh, Katamari is so great. Uh, you can also find it on YouTube, but it's just, like, this businessman in, like, an office and he's just like rolling up everything in the office, and it's fantastic. Give it, give it a little, a little peek. Um. Uh -huh. And then, uh, it took a really long time. I want to say it took like three years uh, after its release before it actually made it to America. 
uh, and people were clamoring for this. They really wanted this game uh, to come out. Uh, and I'm so glad that it did, because I've, I've had so much fun with this game. Me and Mary, which she took a lot of these notes, uh, again, follow her on Instagram at Articus Design. Uh, you can buy your paintings, buy your stickers. They're all very nice. They're all very cool. And uh, I, I enjoy them. I have them on my water bottles. Real basic, like. And then, yeah. That's uh, pretty much it. These mini episodes, there's just like little tidbits here and there, you know? Like, uh, this is just uh, whatever the fuck I feel like uh, doing, pretty much. Uh, anything with music, that's what we're going to be doing on these. Like, I'll probably do more video games. I'll probably do TV shows. Uh, there's a high possibility of, I don't know, maybe even uh, uh, just going... I don't know, maybe going to different, like, events, listening, like carnivals. Maybe there's a carnival. Should I do a carnival episode? Would you guys like that? I go around and I'm like, hey, what, what song is this? Nah, I don't want to do that. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, if you want to hear me stumble through any other topics, uh, feel free to mention it in the comics. Not comics, comments. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the next one that I might do is, like, uh, for these mini-subs, I'm either thinking maybe Persona or Diablo or Doom, something like that. Just a, just a video game that I like a lot, and I love all those video games. Uh, thinking about doing that. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. And I think on that note, we're going to end. What do you say, buddy? It's a good time to end? Yeah, he's taking a nap. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to touch on it as nearly as I wanted. Uh, I will say that everybody who thinks this game is like some conspiracy for consumerism, I think you are probably mistaken. I think it's just a nice, simple game made by a nice... Uh, uh, very cool, very eccentric, silly Artur. Uh, you know, Takahashi has uh, made it blatantly clear uh, that he is very bored by modern video games and was look, kind of looking for his own solution. And I think that's why I like Katamari so much, because it's very colorful and it's cute, but it's also punk as fuck. And, uh, yeah, because a lot of people, sorry to drag this on, but a lot of people think that it's like some, like, big symbolism for communism, or not communism, but consumerism, and, you know, I'm not so sure about that. I think maybe it's just a nice game. I think John Carpenter's They Live is about consumerism and aliens, uh, but I don't think this is They Live. I think it's just a nice chibi game to play uh, with loved ones uh, and just to, just to have a nice nice time. Uh, to ruin some other conspiracies, I'm pretty sure Bobby is not Bill's son. Uh, all the Rugrats are alive. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's any conspiracies about Cat Dog or Two Angry Beavers. Uh, but if there is, probably, uh, they're probably wrong too. But, thanks for tuning in, guys. Alright. I'm gonna make sure this Kit Kat gets a nap. All right, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.